and um, welcome to the first race of the Super Formula League by MRC over on Facebook. This is a new league uh, to replace Grand Trish Motor and Car Championship just for the temporary while there's in the off-season. So, so far qualified sixth, um, what was that, 116.9 I believe, uh, only three tenths off my optimal time so not too bad and puts me right in the middle of the pack. Uh, so this was the first time starting this car, so this is a bit interesting and I don't think I quite had enough revs here. So yeah, slightly delayed on the start, you can see people pulling away there um, and probably could have done with a few more revs but it looks like uh, on the outside there I think that might have been Steve struggling and managed to get up into fifth straight away into the first corner and then on the exit getting a good exit and managing to take it a cheeky fourth and up onto Chewy. Look at the inside, uh, there isn't much of a braking zone into this corner and he did have the slipstream for the car ahead so kind of backed out of it, thought uh, best not to attack into that corner there. Looking around the outside of Chewy, but again it's only a dab of brakes into this corner so the move really isn't on in there and we have to slot back in behind Chewy and see if we can keep up a decent pace here. So looking back on the replay, you can see my reaction time was pretty poor and I really struggled there. Um, it wasn't Steve, it looks like it was somebody else on the outside there. So I'm actually down to seventh, but going into the breaking of the first corner, quite confident, and managed to make my way up to fifth. And it looked like Steve just behind it, I think it was my MRC Bobby that was on the outside. We managed to get past that hyper hyperio um, on the exit of the center S. And as, as I say again, looking to the inside of Chewy, not really got a move on there, but more to say on here. Um, and maybe throw a torpedo down the inside um, to defend them in the fourth position, really. So, catching up again with the action. So, um, at this point, you can see I've made a couple of mistakes um, coming out of that corner there, lost traction, got the car sideways, so I'm all just starting to lose uh, places, lost time to chewy. Uh, the three ahead. To be fair, Philo looks like he's away and gone, and at this point, I, I didn't quite feel confident um, or comfortable with the car. I had done some testing beforehand, um, and I knew that I was going to have to save fuel. My idea was to try and make two stops uh, every 20 minutes, uh, so at the 20 minute mark and the 40 minute mark. So I knew I was going to have to save fuel. So you saw as we came out of Jukkal there, I was short shifting and then using the boost to try and level it out there. I found using boost is more fuel efficient when needed to and I needed the top speed just to hold off uh, Hyperio just be behind us. So going down here you can already see we are dropping back uh, but as you can see coming out the corners there short shifting in fourth, fifth again short shifting just to start saving fuel. It's only lap two but I am thinking ahead I need to try and make 20 minute Fuel, fuel stops basically and I'm hoping the guys ahead although they may be a little bit faster because they don't have to fuel save they may have to make an extra stop and the uh, pit lane is quite long here at Interlagos so you can see here uh, Hyperio dropping into the radar every now and then so I know he's pretty close to us coming up to the final corner here again Jukkal nice apex on the power a little bit too early and a snap of oversteer and that is going to drop us back a little bit. Not as much as I was last time. So you can see here, short shifting still, but no boost. It looks like we've got enough of a buffer coming out of the final corner to hold off uh, fifth place. Down into the first corner there, a bit wider the apex. But to say, at this point, I just didn't quite feel comfortable in the car. Um, qualifying, I thought, went quite well and I was quite consistent, but just not feeling it right now and I think seeing the guys ahead was making me doubt my strategy was correct and made me thinking should I just go hell to leather and try and close up that gap or should I stick to my plan. So again a little bit short shifted I found not, not much need to short shift through this centre section here uh, just because then nobody can get past you really 
um, it's quite difficult for somebody to get alongside you, although I do run very wide there, Hyperio is right on the back of us now, so now we are going to have to defend down and start pretty straight, it looks like he is close enough. Down to third, take a bit too much curve there, and it unsettles the rear, get on the power, you can see Hyperio is about three tenths of a second behind, I am on the boost, but again short shifting more boost into 6th gear than I would have liked normally in 6th gear, I like to get off the boost. You can see Hyperio just in the slipstream and Bobby's just behind him. He looks to the inside but not quite possible to get past there so it looks like I managed to hold him off. Um, now my fear here was if I do start getting caught and passed by Hyperio, is Bobby also going to get passed? Um, at this point I think Hyperio is faster than me. And if he does manage to get into a position where he can get past, I think it'd probably be best if I just let him go, if I'm honest. So let's check uh, at the standards how it stands. So up front is your leader, Philo. Second is Potter in the uh, green Super Formula car. Third is Chewy in the Jordan sponsored uh, car. Lovely livery there, classic one from the uh, late 90s. Myself in fourth with Hyperio just behind him fifth you can see the gap is very close there and sixth we've got Bobby in the initial D sponsored Super Formula car so the gap here is really tight um, and looks like I'm really the cork in the bottle here so Iberia wants to get past me as soon as possible. Down in seventh we've got Timmy and eighth we've got Rick in the all green Super Formula car. Ninth uh, we've got um, Rufus, 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 yeah, and I believe 10th is maybe Steve, so he was up there, so it looks like he maybe had a mistake in the McLaren West sponsored uh, Super Formula car, so he's going to have to make up some positions from back there. So as we join the action again on board with my car here, you can see Hyperio is really in there, I am dropping back still on the top three, and I think Philo was the class of the field here. But coming out the corner, Junkau, again short shifting but on the boost. I've already used a quarter of my boost available for the race. And it looks like Hyperio is well and truly in the slipstream here. So I'm putting the car semi-defensive but not really fully committed. He gets on the brakes later and manages to get the car down the inside. To be fair, I kind of was happy with that because I'd rather him pull away from me and me try and keep up and feel safe rather than they cause too many issues. So you can see there, he got down the inside and got the pass done. So you can see here, I'm in the slipstream. It looks like uh, Bobby made a mistake, so he's 2.2 seconds behind. So it looks like uh, whatever happened before meant that Hyperio could get past me and I could drop back into some free space. So looking for back further down, uh, looking at the action, we've got the battle for seventh here. Rick runs wide and that allows Timmy to make his way back past a, a Rick coming down the start finish straight. And then you've got Rufus is going to be looking at Rick coming down into the first corner. And it looks like he gets the move done. It looks like Rick may have a, a bit of penalty to serve there from running wide. And he managed to get the move done. So now we're up to Timmy seventh, Rufus eighth, and Rick down to ninth. So this looks, at this point, the closest battle. Rollover who is at red on Rufus's car, which I believe means he's got less than half of his boost left, if I remember correctly. Correct me if I'm wrong. But that means he's used quite a lot of his boost already in the start of this race. And it looks like these two may be slightly pulling away from Rick at this point. So let's do a uh, rundown as they have been rejigged. You can see Philo still ahead, got a nice cushion there building already. Potter still under pressure from a Chewy in the Jordan sponsored uh, Formula car just behind. These two are quite close. Hyperion now up to fourth after passing myself. Myself down to fifth and trying to uh, stay consistent and stay to my plan. Uh, sixth is Bobby moving up and it looks like he's stabilised the gap and it looks like Rufus has now managed to get past Timmy coming down the start finish straight there. So he manages to get the pass done on Timmy and they both make it into the first corner and it looks like Rick's dropped back a bit there. I can't see Rick behind but it definitely looks like um, 
Rufus is on the move. Maybe you decided to use his boost mostly at the start of a race and not really safe. Although Timmy there on the brakes goes into the rear of Rufus there. It looks like it's close up the gap. It doesn't look like it put Rufus off too much, but there was contact coming into turn three. Rufus on the inside, managing to hold off Timmy there. Timmy's going to have to look again and see if he can uh, regroup and see if he can make a pass on Rufus here. Through the technical infield section. Looks like as Steve is behind, so where's Rick? Rick's down in 10th. He was right on the back of that battle, so let's do a quick replay. Looks like he's gone for a very early pit stop. So he's in the pits already. So I don't know whether... Um, Maybe he's going to stretch the fuel stints or what, uh, but a very early pit stop there by Rick. Maybe he just wanted to get some free traffic. To rejoin the action on board with me, lap 9, yellow flag, so I'm hopeful here. And look, it's actually Chewy coming back onto the track very slow. And we managed to take the momentum and go all the way around the outside. So it looks like something's happened ahead. And so it happened with Chewy, it was dropped back, so let's check a replay. So he's up in third, going down into first corner, goes for a move, hits the inside, and then loses the rear end. Loses the rear end, and they get stuck against the wall. All this time, hem hemorrhaging time. And it looks like he eventually gets going, but of course he's going to be down on momentum. And I managed to catch him, go all the way around the outside. So it looks like Ch Chewy went for the move for second. Come off and it's actually crossing all the way down to fifth place. Let's check on the uh, on board. So it goes to the inside, gets alongside. There is contact. Potter takes to the runoff, but it looks like Chewie came off worse than that. It, it was quite a good move, well, quite an optimistic move. Came from far back, but it looked like it got well alongside uh, Potter there, but it just didn't come off. So at this point, I know Chewie's got more pace than myself and he's probably not fuel saving. So at this point, it's just probably a matter of time until he can find a way past myself. So I'm trying to keep it neat. I don't want to lose any time, uh, but I don't want to give him an easy ride. Coming down into Junkau, missed the apex by a good half car's width, and it looks like he manages to get the car up alongside me. And yeah, you can see he's alongside me. I pop back down into the slipstream. I might as well take the free performance of slipstream. But these cars banging into the rev limiter, I go to the more normal line and actually go wet a little bit too wide and end up touching the grass and actually losing a bit of braking performance and costing myself some time. So looking back down through the field, we've got the battle here. We've got 6th Bobby, 7th Rufus and 8th Timmy. And they're literally squabbling all through this uh, technical section down into the tight corner, they're actually three wide, three wide into that corner and they all managed to get through without any of them coming off the circuit. Oh, Bobby loses the rear end coming to the penultimate corner really there and drops down to eighth. So that's leaving Rufus seventh and Timmy, uh, Rufus sixth and Timmy seventh, but it looks like Timmy's on the move, got the inside line down the start from straight. And it looks like Rufus has to concede that position at this point, but can he come back? into the braking zone. Braking down into the first corner, Timmy's got the inside line and it looks like he cements that position and gets past Rufus. Now with their squabbling, that's allowed Bobby to get back up into the action. So it's quite a good battle there, three wide through the technical infield section of Interglargos. I'm impressed, lads. So let's do a rundown after those switch switcheroos. We've got Philo first and literally romping away with this. Second, we've got Potter, and very closely fired, followed by Hyperio in the Mercedes-powered Super Formula car. Looks like these two are quite even, and it uh, looks chewy after that mistake, starting to catch up to those guys in the Jordan car, while myself down to fifth. So, I'm up one from the qualifiers position, so I suppose that's good. Sixth, this battle still raging, Timmy, losing rear end out of the final corner. What is in sixth? I don't think he's going to be in sixth for much longer. Actually looks like can Rufus get that momentum going around the outside. They might be both on boost there by the looks of it. Rufus on the racing line, Timmy on the inside line. It looks like he just about manages to hold on. While all this is happening, Bobby's looking behind going, come on lads, 
Let's get this battle going so I can get past you two. And there, Rufus in the slipstream, looks to the inside, but nothing much going on there. Uh, it is a tricky uh, pass in there, you really need to be right alongside because there is a break zone, but it isn't that long, it's probably only about 50 metres or so. So, uh, further back we've got Steve, ninth, um, looks like he had some issues at the start, but still starting to catch up. And tenth, Rick with that really early stop, we'll have to see later in the race how that plays out for himself. Looking further back, it looks like Rufus manages to get the pass done on Timmy, manages to get his nose up alongside in the technical infield section and get it the pass done. Timmy down to seventh and now going to be under attack by Bobby. As he makes another mistake on the exit, it looks like. It looks like he lost the rear end again on the exit of Junkow. It looks like traction is really struggling with Timmy there. And uh, Bobby all over the room. And it looks like he actually goes for the pits. It looks like maybe those guys were holding him up. Holding him up. And he thought, you know what, I best get into the pits and get this pit stop out of the way and try and get some clean air. Now that's going to be very important. Of course, Rick, which we're following now, took the early stop. Let's see if it's paid off. He's now, it looks like it's up to eight, so it looks like somebody else was in the pits. So, maybe that early stop has paid off. He's managed to get himself some clean air and just hammer in those lap times. Maybe Rick is going to be a dark horse for later in this race. Yeah, it looks like uh, Steve also taking an early pit stop, as well as Bobby. So Bobby coming out quite a way behind um, Rick, so it definitely looks like that took uh, was a good idea. So standings at how they stand right now. Philo, he isn't going to get caught. Let's be honest here. Second, uh, we've got Potter with Chewy right behind him now. We have skipped forward a, a little bit of time here, so it looks like Chewy really starting to catch up and passing him Hyperion. I think this is maybe after some pit stops. In fact, and we've got Rick all the way up to fifth. Remember, this guy was last, taking the early pit stop, and myself down to sixth. At this point, um, a bit upset that I've lost so many spaces. Steve up into seventh, while we've got Rufus down to eighth. And ninth, Timmy really losing the out in the pit stops and the racing gear. And tenth, Bobby losing out even more than Timmy, he's actually now last. So, joining the action back at the head of the field, Chewy uh, up to third, so doing well. Although he loses the rear end, he loses the rear end coming out of Junkau, and it's actually it looked like he was trying to line up a move for second, and it's actually looking like he's going to drop all the way back down to fifth. Rick has the momentum and goes clean around the outside. So Chewy evidently got good pace, but making a few crucial mistakes so far. He's made two massive mistakes, and that's really cost him. He maybe could have been up there for second. I don't think he could have got first, because Philo is in a league on his own. So, as we join the action back on board with me, you can see there um, Rick running wide off the track. I think because of taking that early stop, he got the lap time at the start, but now he's suffering with the consequences, which is high tyre wear. The tyres uh, are shot there, understeering off at the final corner, and actually sliding off, and actually losing more time, which is always a problem with running that arm worn tyres, trying to extend the scent. Not only are you slower, but you're more prone to mistakes. And there you can see Rick popping into the pits. So you can see, after a few pit stops, I'm all the way up into second. Nowhere near first, admittedly, but I am all the way up into second. And you can see the time remaining, we're pretty much bang on the 20-minute mark. And the uh, fuel tank is looking pretty empty at this point, only 2% of fuel left. So we're coming in for my scheduled pit stop. So at this point, I'm hoping that my strategy is going to mean that I'm going to make a, one less pit stop than the guys behind. I am going to lose this second position as we come into the pits, but I'm hoping that they may need to make another pit stop and I can make it all the way to the end. So into the pits with only 1% fuel, we have to use two tyre compounds during this race. So I use a soft for the first right the stint and soft for the second stint. So we're now going to the medium and we're going to try and fill up the fuel tank all the way to the brim. So this bit's just agony. You're sitting here and you're just watching uh, the 
other drivers pass you in the pits thinking where am I going to come out so out of the pits full tank of fuel getting on the power and you can see right now it's shown seventh but you're never quite sure until you get to the pit exit and round out of the pit and we are down to fifth so we are what 13 seconds behind Potter and three and a half seconds ahead of Rick at this point so yeah um, I was feeling confident uh, got a little bit foot of Rick I wasn't sure what strategy Rick was on because of him making that such an early stop but I have to say this was the first time I was using the medium tyre here and you can see I just wasn't prepared for it. I should have done more practice. Ran wide there, and then get on the power, lost the rear end. Um, so, and Rick goes past, so threw away over three and a half seconds straight away there. Uh, that was my fault. I should have maybe done more practice on the medium tyre, and, and I lost some position. So, let's do a rundown of how things stand. Philo uh, up in first. Uh, actually lapping people up into fourth place, Chewy up into second, so making amends for some of those mistakes. The Hyperion third, great result for Hyperion so far, a quiet race but just getting on with the job I think. Fourth is Potter, you can see Philo just ahead so he's already a lap ahead of fourth, so the win is his and easily his. Fifth is Rick in the all green Super Formula car after getting past myself, uh, he was on the soft tyre and I just I, I was struggling on the medium tyre to start off with. Um, I wasn't used to the lack of mechanical grip and it looks like Rick is actually pitting so this may be Rick's final pit stop. So you can see he did build a bit of a gap up to me but at this point I'm like yes uh, I just need to hold on as long as he's not on the soft tyre and doesn't come back. Seventh we've got Bobby. Eighth we've got Steve. So Steve making good moves back up through the field looks like another again consistent performance catching up and Timmy down to ninth was up there uh, in the battle for six at the start but with Rufus in fact who's now 10th so it looks like maybe I don't know whether this is strategy uh, just wait for the pit stops to fall out or what so joining back on board with myself um, you can see here um, we've gone back a couple of seconds you can see Rick has just pitted and I'm coming through here again I'm still trying to fuel save so I've taken uh, Rick's fifth spot back from him and you can see the guys ahead they're 21 seconds ahead so um, unless something happens I reckon it's going to be tough to catch them up but you never know about strategy especially around here because as I say I had my strategy firmly locked in uh, from near the start of the race so yeah see uh, Rick has dropped back to at least ninth so if his strategy is to work he's gonna have to get his passive boots on and try and pass some of the guys ahead so as we follow the, uh, my car you can see fastest lap I haven't done one in a long time and that's just because really I was trying to fuel save I knew I wouldn't be able to do fastest laps here with having the same save the kind of fuel that I have to save so you can see short shifting in fourth although I didn't there and short shifting in fifth and it looks like Potter is actually pitting so he's got 59 laps uh, percent worth of fuel so he looks like he's going to need a splash and, uh, splash and dash but that does mean he can switch over to the soft tyre potentially um, so it looks like I'm going to be able to pass him get up to fourth yeah he is onto the soft tyre and he has taken fuel but that is going to be a bit of a concern for me because although I'm going to have track position he's going to have a lot faster tyre and potentially he won't have to fuel save so looking back you can see he's only what's eight tenths of a second behind me and on the far superior lap, uh, tyre sorry so coming up into the fast technical well slow technical section of Interlagos and you can see he's really starting to catch catch me again I'm on the harder tyre so straight away I've got less mechanical rear I've got uh, older tyres and I just don't know if I'm going to be a match for him but only got 13 minutes to hold on you can see there again I'm extending the gears slightly 
I've switched to the radar so I can see where he is. Coming into Junkau, you can see he's right on me. And I actually make uh, a bit of oversteer, maybe concentrating a bit too much behind rather than ahead, and having to use a good slugger boost on the exit of the corner. Looks like here comes Potter, he's in my slipstream. I go to the defensive line. He goes to the outside, breaking hard. He breaks later than myself, but that is a dirty line there, and it looks like I just managed to hold him off. Um, that was pretty crucial, to be fair. So let's check a quick replay. You can see here Potter got the slipstream. Well in the slipstream of my car, even though I was using the boost. So I decided I'm taking the inside line, you're not having this. He goes to the outside. But you can see there, just on all the dirty marbles there, and just runs way, way wide. Maybe got a bit of a penalty serve there as well. And, and means I've managed to hold him off. So, let's do a quick rundown of where people stand. Philo, the winner. I know he isn't the winner at this point, but he's all but the winner. Um, absolutely amazing performance. Second, Chewy, holding on to second. It looks like it's still a quite a close fight between him and Hyperion for second and third and the final spots on that podium. Who's going to join Philo on that podium? We'll have to find out. Fourth, myself. Um, so I managed to hold off a Potter and I don't know what happened, maybe just didn't have the pace in the car, um, but or maybe his fuel safer, I don't know. Uh, he just didn't have the pace to keep up with myself or challenge me even on the softer tyre. Sixth, Rick. So making moves upwards after that uh, opposite strategy, should we say. And Rufus now up into seventh. It looks like the strategies have started to shake themselves out. Uh, Bobby, unfortunately, down to eighth in the initial D Super Formula car and kind of on his own at this point. Ninth, Steve-O in the West McLaren uh, Super Formula car. Uh, quite a quiet race for him. And tenth, uh, unfortunately, Timmy. It looked like he made some good progress in the start of the race, but maybe having some issues with longevity and his car. So, what we're going to do is we're going to join the action on board my car uh, for the final three and a bit minutes. So at this point, I, as you can see, I'm revving the car out because I thought, you know what, I've got enough fuel. I've got two and a half laps left and there's only three minutes left. So um, I managed to open the gap out to Potter to, what, 6.1 seconds. Um, Chewie and Hyperion did an extra stop, so they're only seven seconds ahead. Um, so I was at this point I was just like yeah I might as well just have some fun use the car to its best of its abilities um, try not to make too many mistakes like that one there and it should be fourth which overall yeah I'm, I'm happy with it's not too bad it's not until this point that I clock hey I've only got two laps of fuel left and I don't think I've got enough fuel left because of where Philo is. So at this point I'm like still revving out and trying to do the maths inside my head and go yeah that's less than two laps worth of fuel and I've got two minutes still to go. Um, and this is where panic starts stepping in and you can see here I actually coast uh, down to the first corner and I've clocked you know what my mass is correct I'm not gonna make it to the end so you can see wow I've got really start fuel saving so you can see I'm starting to shift a lot earlier and I've already lost nearly a second to Potter behind so yeah you can see I'm short shifting third fourth fifth short shifting fifth very early now um, as I only have 1.3 laps worth of fuel now a lap is 1 minute 16 18 maybe so I've got to do this lap and another lap afterwards. So this is where I'm starting the panic. So you can see I'm really short shifting through the technical section there. So third, fourth, fifth. I'm actually up to sixth before Junkau. You can see I'm all, the gap is now down to 4.4 seconds. I'm really starting to panic at this point. You can see laps remain of fuel 1.1 I'm at one lap so if I don't still continue to fuel save at this point I will be out of fuel on the next lap and we've still got one more lap to do so across the start and finish straight uh, lifting off early uh, the gap is now down to only 3.7 seconds 
and I know also Potter is on the softer tyre, so he's going to have more mechanical grip than myself. Looking back to see where he is, we've only got 0.7 of a lap left of fuel, and the gap is now down to, what's that, 2.1 seconds. This is getting tight. My butt was clenched hard. So you can see I'm up in sixth here, and the car is hardly accelerating, just because I've got to save some fuel. I'm starting to come back into it, so you can see I've got half a lap of fuel left and I'm roughly around half a lap round. Velo has finished the race, so now the gap is down to 1.5 seconds. So still saving a bit of fuel, but it looks like I might just be able to get there. But this is going to be tight, because this car uses a lot of fuel down the start finish straight, so you can see I'm up into sixth here. 1.7 seconds to Potter, so maybe he's got fuel saving. Uh, he's having to do. I'm using the boost there to compensate, extending the gears there because I just don't want to be caught at the start finish line. Gaps down to 1.2 seconds, but it looks like I can do it. Fuel is at 0%, a little wiggle as we cross the line, and I managed to get fourth somehow. So let's see how things finish. First was Philo, second Hyperion, third Chewy, myself, fourth Potter, fifth Rick, sixth, seventh Rufus, eighth. Uh, Bobby, 9th Steve and 10th Timmy. So that was a really close race. Uh, Philo, class of the field, he was a lap ahead of everybody. Um, so maybe he needs some success balance or something like that. Um, so started 6th, finished 4th, great result for me. If you enjoyed this, if you want to see more, like, subscribe. If you don't, dislike, let me know how you feel. See you again soon.